Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we gather today to celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, the last Sunday of the liturgical year, we have an opportunity to reflect on the Lord's goodness to us and his presence to us and how he calls us. So we uh, open our hearts to his love and mercy once again. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone of the Holy One, you alone of the Lord, You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord 
for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through one man, the resurrection of the dead also came through one man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life. But each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink a stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me, ill, and you cared for me, in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome, naked, and you gave me no clothing, ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will say, answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you naked, hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Good morning. Um, so thanks for your, your patience with all of this. Uh, we decided to sort of suspend music and singing for, um, for this weekend and next weekend, and then we'll kind of take it um, on a weekly basis. All of that, of course, is just to, to help stop the spread, right? So um, thanks for your, your cooperation with that. Thanks for wearing the masks, and thanks for taking care of one another. So uh, Father Tony had reminded me, though, since we're not having music, um, that I'm supposed to preach longer to take up that extra time. So, so today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, great feast. Um, and it's interesting when we celebrate this Feast of Christ the King, when we talk about him as a king, there's no thrones or rich garments that we talk about um, when we, we talk about this one. Instead, we hear of things like service, of being a good shepherd, of care, of concern for those who are the most lowly. Jesus very clearly states that when we serve those who are in need, we serve him. Likewise, when we don't serve them, we don't serve him. And one author, which I thought was pretty uh, interesting the way he put it so briefly, said, Jesus, the most high, is found in the most low. As we've been reflecting on a lot of end time and end of the world topics in our readings over the last few weeks, there's been a consistent message that what we do in this life matters in terms of our eternal destiny. And it's not exactly what we like to think about. It's not a pop popular subject when, uh, for din for when we have friends over for dinner or in today's environment for those Zoom happy hours, right? And it's not meant for us to, <clears throat> to hear this as threatening, but more so as an invitation, as Jesus' way to show us the ways to imitate him and to grow closer to him. That's what this is about. And as we deal with the threat of COVID-19 and its spread, as we feel more distance between us and others, as difficult as it is to have those personal encounters anymore, there remains great need and still many opportunities to serve those who are in need. And in doing so, <clears throat> to serve the God who dwells in them. So I think our call, even in the midst of all of this craziness, is to focus away from what we can't do when it comes to living our Christian vocation, to, sh to, to more focus on how we can serve and how the, call, the Lord calls us to serve him and others in the midst of this. So I was thinking about this, and maybe we can think of our own examples, but you know, for that person who's suffering from COVID, or who's isolated or quarantined, or who lives in fear, or who's lonely or anxious, and we sure see plenty of that. A phone call can make a huge difference. Or for the needy who are hungry or homeless or who just don't have enough resources, a gift to the St. Vincent de Paul Society or to the food pantry or to the effort to help our local homeless population can help a ton. Or to the or for us even to maybe clean out our closet and to let go of that extra coat can sure help keep another person warm. And we can think of many other acts of, of kindness and service that we can do. But the call we get today is to do something. And the thing to avoid, as Jesus speaks to us, to us today, is to do nothing. There's a great story about a king who had no child to succeed him to the throne. So um, in order to find somebody to succeed him, he decides to interview potential candidates in his kingdom to be the next king. He said there were only two qualifications. The successful candidate would need love for God and love for neighbor. Those were the two things. Well, a poor peasant boy decided to apply but he had no nice clothes. So he worked and eventually was able to purchase some new clothes so that he would look good for his interview. And on his way to the interview, he encountered a poor beggar who was shivering from the cold. So the young man 
kind of naturally just traded his warm clothes for the beggar's raggy clothes. And he thought to himself, there's no way that he was going to get that job now. But he went anyway. He was escorted in to see the king for his interview. And to his surprise, the young man saw that the king was wearing the clothes that he gave to the poor man. The king disguised himself as the poor man. Impressed by the young man's generosity and sacrifice and care for neighbor, he said to the young man, Welcome, my son. And he got the, he got the role. Jesus the Most High is found in the most low. On this feast of Christ the King, Jesus calls us to assume his type of kingship of being generous in our service to others, of giving of our time to reach out to those who need us. Because in doing so, we serve him, and that's where we find him. In this Eucharist, Christ our King comes to us and, and, and becomes one with us again. We walk away from this encounter as bodies of Christ, charged with serving him in and through others especially those who are in need of physical, spiritual, and emotional support. It's an opportunity for us to look for the ways that we can serve. Our call today is to heed Jesus' word, to treat others as Jesus, so that we can, in the end, hear those blessed words spoken to us. Welcome, my son. Welcome, my daughter. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I invite you to stand. And together as a family of faith, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. And now let us offer our petitions to our loving God. For the Church, that we may recognize Christ in one another and honor the dignity of each person, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders in the Church, that they may be shepherds like Jesus, who gather the lost, bind up the injured, and encourage the weak, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For dynamic faith, that in times of chaos and confusion, we may be confident that Christ will defeat all evils, including death, and lead us to the fullness of life with God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially those whose names are listed in the bulletin, that God will heal them and give them strength and give strength to those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, for Joseph Wolf, nephew of Christine Piantic, 
Mary Jo Malone, sister of Kathy Oldenburg, Audrey A. Holt, mother of Rick A. Holt, Mignon Rotering, Dorothy Richardson, Ann Hill, Janine Marquardt, Dalton Phila, and Kenneth Donnelly. May they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause now to offer to God our own intentions. We pray especially for Davis Boer, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we come before you with thanks, and in faith we ask you now to hear us as we pray. Listen to the prayers we've spoken and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. In your compassion and mercy, answer us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Thank you. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a few announcements. Uh, again, uh, thanks for, for the, your cooperation with all of this uh, craziness. Based on that current mandate in place for Franklin County, uh, we are requiring masks at all times in church and ask that you continue to practice safe distancing and sanitizing and all of those good things. Thank you for your cooperation with this and your care for the health and safety of others. And of course, of course, let us pray for the end of this pandemic and for all who suffer uh, because of it. There are many out there. Our Christmas outreach program begins this weekend. There are ornaments on the giving trees. There's one here in church. Uh, there's one in the main entry there at, and of Jesuit Hall. We ask that you return the ornament with the unwrapped gift. Um, if you would like to make a monetary donation, you can drop that off to the parish office or put it in the collection basket. Just make sure we know that that's what it's for. Uh, there's more details in the bulletin, including the date uh, for when the, uh, the gifts need to be returned by. On Thanksgiving Day, uh, we'll have mass, one mass at 9 a.m. So there will not be a 7 o'clock mass, one mass Thanksgiving Day at 9 a.m. Uh, we hope to see you there. Our 2021 calendars are available um, at the exits. Um, you can take one or you can take ten. <laughs> All right, we want to get rid of these things, so <laughs> take as many as you'd like. Um, lectors, um, anybody who serves the ministry of lector, we have books for you. Uh, the readings with the readings in them, they are in the sacristy, the vesting sacristy, off of the main lobby of Jesuit Hall. Um, another uh, collection that we're doing, of course, uh, uh, you may have heard the scouting for food. Uh, has been canceled this year. They're not allowing the scouts to go house to house like they have in the past. So our scout troop uh, has decided to still sponsor a food collection. So we're going to do that in church. You'll see uh, bins at different uh, places. If you can bring a canned good, um, maybe next week or Thanksgiving Day, um, something to share. We're going to really help to our, our food pantry alone, along with the other food pantries in town, rely on that scouting for, for food collection. So let's do what we can, along with the other churches in our community, to, to bolster that supply so that they have plenty. Uh, if you'd like to make a monetary donation to that, you can. Uh, just make that out to um, make sure it's marked for the food pantry. Uh, next Sunday at the 11 o'clock Mass, Archbishop Rosansky will be here. Um, so, of course, in the midst of the pandemic, who knew? Um, and he will be, uh, and it'll be uh, the mass of, of my formal installation uh, as pastor here. So I'm, I'm excited about that, although I wish it were under different circumstances. Uh, we could have a big party, but we won't. So, um, and then a couple of, or several people and families to keep in your prayers who suffered uh, a death. So, um, it's been, a, it's been a lot uh, over the last week and a half or so, but for uh, Mignon Rotaring, uh, Joseph Wolf, who's the nephew of Christine Piantek, for Dorothy Richardson, Kenneth Donnelly, Ann Hill, Janine Marquardt, Mary Jo Malone, who's the sister of Kathy Oldenburg, Audrey Aholt, the mother of Rick Aholt, and Dalton Phila, the son of Scott Phila. So we ask that you uh, please keep them in your prayers and their families this week. So I wish you a very, very blessed Thanksgiving. Um, be safe, whatever you do. And uh, thanks for being here this morning. Have a great week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.